All right, so we're on day number three, and it's all taped. It's all loaded now. I didn't do any of the new drywall stuff. I'm trying to get L the first coat on before I touch any more. Like I have to pre-sand everything once all the first coats on, and then start finish coating. So I got this whole wall all skimmed out. It's nice and very clean. I had to take those sheets down off the windows. I'm going to put those two pieces of drywall up in front. It fits perfect so nobody can see in. But uh, I needed some natural light because I couldn't see my lines. My trowel lines. That's the most important is having these perfect little lips that are very easy to sand out. No indents, no cuts, just very small lips. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's very, very small, small lips roughly every six inch every eight inches or so that's six to eight inches and you just brush that out get rid of those lips and it's all flat and then it's two more very tight skims and it's the same process you're just leaving really tiny lips the lips get smaller with each coat but the most important thing is doing what i did yesterday building up the areas that are humpy and stuff like that and making them true flat first before you start this skimming process otherwise you all end up with cut lines all over and it just won't work out and you'd be wondering why and I just told you why because <laughs> you didn't if you did if you don't straighten it first it's, it's just not going to skim so this is the starting of the skimming process there's two more tight tight coats that go on with whippy or mud which is a lot faster and easier to put on it gets easier to put on as I go basically minus the pre sand in between so, but the pre-sand also gets easier as you go too, until the finish sand. The finish sand is really easy because there's like no lines at all anymore. So it's all, it's really flat, it's very square. That corner where it had that big, like a indent, about 10 inches back, it went in like half inch, almost three quarters of an inch. It's nice and filled up and flat now. So after two more tight skims, it's gonna look beautiful. In here, I had a couple of issues with, uh, there was a couple of bubbles that I had to cut out and there was uh, a lot of bleeding. I'm hoping that this will work. So I mixed up some straight, just straight sheetrock without mud in it. And I loaded all the spots that were bleeding and any little air, but like, uh, I guess there was still wallpaper on this wall. It looked like it had been all scraped off, but I guess there must've been another layer behind it or something. So there was a couple little air bubbles just in this area right here so i cut them out and then just loaded it with straight sheetrock it's already pretty much dry like to the touch so i loaded it about an hour ago so hopefully that'll fix it the bleeding i don't know if the bleeding still bleeds through persists to bleed through the only fix for that is to buy kills paint from like home depot or whatever it's called kills and it's uh you can buy it by the gallon i think or the five gallon so you'd only need like a gallon for this wall, not even, but I would put the whole gallon on it. I'd do like two good coats of the kills and then a good coat of primer and then two good coats of paint. Cause it, it I think it's gonna bleed through the mud again. I'm not sure. I'm hoping the sheetrock will fix it, but I don't know by the time I put the next coat of mud on cause it's regular finishing compound and it holds the moisture longer. And that's why you get little like if you have wallpaper behind it, that's why it bubbles out because the regular compound holds the moisture a lot longer than just the sheetrock does, right? So hopefully that'll fix it. We'll find out tomorrow morning when I come back. I got that, this whole wall. That's all loaded up now. Ready for a pre-sand and then starting the finished coat process. I call it a process because there's two coats on finished coat when you're straightening walls like this and then skimming out full walls after after you straightened them. So now that corner doesn't have that big wow in it anymore. And after after I'm done my next coat, I'll be doing the angle actually tomorrow because this probably won't be completely dry, dry enough to sand. I'll come in and I'll do one side of the angles through the whole house just because they do take time to dry. They take a, generally about two days to fully dry to sanding dryness. It's just a mud blob right there. I'll just wait till it dries and sand it off. So, but the angles take generally a day and a half to two days to dry completely to the point where you can sand them 
or come back and coat the other side of them properly without cutting into them. So tomorrow, because all this stuff that I've coated today is basically wet and I have to wait for it, before I can pre-sand anything, I like to pre-sand everything all at once so nothing is missed. And then when I run through skimming, it's nice and very easy, systematic, clean, easy, easy, fast skim. And uh, the bathroom, I couldn't sand the other side of the angles. They weren't completely dry yet on the very, very insides. So some are, like some areas are and some areas aren't. So it's fine though, the tile guy can come in. I'm gonna sand that joint off before I go home today. Tile guy can come in, he can do his thing. I can sand up to the tile, that's fine. It's all finished for him though. It's ready for the tile guy. It's Wednesday now. So I said Wednesday, it's fine. He can come in and do the tile. I'll brush this joint out, just get that lip off and stuff. It's all true flat now. So, so yeah, that wall, it's all done. First coat of the skimming process. We already did the front wall up there. We've already done this wall and we've already done back there. So let's go into the blue room. The room that was blue yesterday with brown spot, like brown trowel, trowel uh, spots all the way around the top and just fill in pieces everywhere. So this is now what the first coat is looking like. It's nice and easy to sand out now. Angles are straightening up. Everything's straightening up. You don't see any of the humps around the plug anymore. That plug down there, you don't see that big hump around it anymore. So it's all straightening up now. This curve is probably gonna need like three more coats just on this curve area. I'll have to wait till the wall's dry and then just do one coat. I'll do one coat tomorrow because it'll be set up enough. Not completely dry, but set up enough that I can coat across it without cutting into what I've coated. So I'll load that up again and then I'll get rid of that little blue spot there and it'll just clean the, the, the curve up a lot nicer. It already is looking a hell of a lot nicer. So there's no big lips or chunks or anything in it and it's nice and round looking now, smooth. So that, that's only first coat, right? So yeah, she's, she's cleaning up good now. Now you start to see what, what I'm talking about when I say I'm gonna make these, all these walls look brand new. You're starting to kind of see it. I've built up a brand new surface that I can now work with. I like to call it a canvas. Because when I do this mud work, I am kind of like an artist. And this is my canvas. So this is my brand new canvas. And now I get to do my final finishing work. The final product is going to start showing now. So it's all straight now. It, it skimmed out really well with all the straightening that I did yesterday. There's only one questionable area and you probably can't even see it because of the lighting. But right here is where that piece of tape that ripped out was. But now I've loaded this uh, this whole wall and this whole wall up. So once it dries, well, even tomorrow when it's almost completely dry, set up enough that I won't cut into it, I can just load that right up and it'll fill it right in and it'll be true flat again and like perfect. You won't see no hump there or nothing. You already don't see any hump there, but it's just a little dry spot where the tape was. And if I put mud on it, you would have seen a hump or there would have been a cut. So you got a tiny little bit of bleed through here. So yeah, I'm thinking they're, you, the homeowners on this one, when they do the painting, they probably are gonna have to grab a gallon of kills. That's the only thing that'll cover up that bleed through, guys. It stinks too. So when you use it, wear a mask and make sure you have good ventilation in the house. It'll stink for a couple of hours. And you freaking, if you don't wear a mask, you'll get high off of it, literally. I, I learned the hard way when I was working for some painters way back in the day. We were in a firehouse, a place that had a kitchen fire, grease fire. And we were just repainting the whole kitchen, basically, with this kill stuff to get rid of the smoke smell. And we both didn't know. You know, we never read the, the can before we started using it. And this the, the kitchen was just a small little kitchen. And it was completely plasticed off. <laughs> like all the doorways in and out because there was an older lady that had like breathing problems and stuff living upstairs. So it was completely plasticed off. So me and the other guy that are painting this kitchen trying to get it done real quick with the kills, pure kills, brushing it all in too. So we're right there. It's not like we're rolling it. We're just brushing it all in, all the cupboards inside and everything, getting our heads inside the cupboards, plasticed in this little kitchen with this 
stuff that is like totally toxic and freaking gets you high. Like we went out for a cigarette break after about an hour and a half of doing this straight. And we sat out there for probably an hour and a half just laughing our asses off. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so and we were just looking at each other like, why are we laughing so much? And then we read the side of the can and we realized this stuff's freaking toxic. <laughs> so we went and got masks. But yeah, just a pointer for anybody that's gonna ever use kills. Wear a mask, make sure your place is heavily ventilated. <laughs> so a little off topic. So it's looking good. We're good. We just got to wait for it to dry. It's going to take a couple days to dry probably today, like all night tonight and all day tomorrow. The next day I'll be able to come in and start doing the pre-sanding and start the skimming process. Probably take me the, almost the whole day to pre-sand this whole house though because there is a, quite a bit now, especially with the skim walls and then the new drywall. But I'll pre-sand everything, screws included, angles included, everything be nice and clean and ready for to start the finishing process. And the angles that's the finishing process. It's part of the finishing process. So that's why they're not coated yet. Tomorrow, like I said, because this stuff's still drying, I'll just touch up any things that may have been low or whatever, like that tape over there. I'll give it a quick load. Just things like that I'll touch up. I'm gonna move this, a lot of this stuff into that very back closet in the kitchen, I think, is what I'm gonna do. And then it's out of the way. I can mud and sand all this without getting dust all over their stuff. And work in this room and get her done and yeah just keep going through so but yeah i'll get all the angles one side done through the whole house tomorrow is my mission while i'm waiting for this all to dry and then get the other side of the angles done in the bathroom he'll probably have the tiles on if he does show up tonight to do that so it'll be fine i'll just work up to it it's no big deal so there we go guys that's where we're at this is we care drywall repair and professional plastering services doing these videos trying to make a name for myself out here with new new clients as i just came from bc a little over a year and a half ago almost two years ago now and uh yeah it took me quite a while to find child care and now i have child care so i'm ready to work let's get some work going you guys see what i do the type of work that i do i started at uh what 9 30 this morning a.m and it's uh, about 3 30 now I'm probably going to work for another hour and then shut her down. So, I think I've done enough for the day. That's a lot of mud. <laughs> All right. Have a great evening.